Dear brothers and sisters, what's your Achilles heel? What's your weakness? What is it that gets you down and what is it that makes you question everything around you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran as a matter of fact that we would be tested. That every person would be tested in some capacity. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described the life of man as this line across a box. And he, he drew this box or this rectangle with the line extending outside the rectangle. And he said that this is the lifespan of man, referring to the line. And he said this rectangle or this box is, his, is, is the actual, I'm sorry, he said this is the, uh, the hopes of man. And he said this box or this rectangle is his lifespan, meaning his hopes in life always extend past the actual date of his death, how much time will actually be allotted to him. No matter who you are or what age you pass away, you'll always feel like there's something that was left on the table and you have hopes that extend, طول amal, hopes that extend beyond your allotted lifespan. So this is man's lifespan and these are, or this, these are his hopes and this is his lifespan. And then he drew a bunch of small lines around, the li or around a person. And he said that these are a'rad, these are tests, they're hindrances. He referred to tests sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this particular hadith as hindrances. These are things that would hinder you. One of them snatches you, the other one misses you. Meaning there are some people that are not tested in their health, but they're tested with their family. And there are some people that are not tested with their family, but they're tested with their health. And there are some people that are not tested with their family or their health, but they're tested with their careers and with their wealth. And there are some people that are tested not with their wealth or with their health or with their family, but they're tested with their reputation. And there are some people that are not tested with those things, but they're tested with their religion. The point is, is that every person has a unique set of tests that they are going to go through in life. And many times when you see other people going through tests or the, you know, that, that are of the nature that you feel confident in overcoming. So maybe Allah is testing someone else in a way that you feel like you would be able to overcome the nature of that test. Maybe your weakness is different from that person's weakness, but we all do have a certain weakness. And at some point when we're put to the test, suddenly these things that are concepts and theories and principles that we often preach about and we talk about suddenly these things come into play and at that point it's not about the text it's about how much you've absorbed of the text it becomes purely experiential at that point the other night in my message i was speaking about you know, this concept of a man who probably has never, who, does, who doesn't read anything about charity or does not know all of the ayat and ahadith about charity. But they are naturally generous people. They already have the quality, they've experienced the quality of generosity. And so when they're put in a situation, they give and their generosity overtakes them. Even though they don't necessarily know all the technicalities and the concepts or the virtues of that said generosity. There are different people that have different qualities and there are people that are tested with different things and when they are tested, suddenly, suddenly, all of the things that you think that you had down are not as prominent in your character as you would have hoped they would have been. Suddenly, you feel like you're reeling. You thought maybe that you'd be able to handle these types of tests but the test came and your faith struggled. Your faith could not hold you up. You thought that you had patience. You've attended lectures on patience. You've heard khutbas about patience. But then something happens to you and you're not patient. And at the, at the core of that issue is that people tie their faith to so many different things, to so many different circumstances, to so many different people, that when that circumstance changes, 
or when that person changes or when that aspect of their life changes suddenly the faith starts to wither away and disappear and that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى حَرْفِ some people worship Allah on an edge they worship Allah literally at the you know on a cliff if something happens that's good to them or what they deem good because only Allah truly deems good and bad but something happens to them that they deem good then they are grateful they say we love this faith we're good with everything we're good with our faith everything is great alhamdulillah the minute that something bad happens to them that they deem as such that they deem bad then they are literally like a person that's jumping off of the cliff of faith suddenly it starts to wither away how many people do you see that weren't so quote unquote religious before a devastating health uh, a tragedy of health or loss of health came to them some sort of disease or sickness but then through that disease and through that sickness they found faith and they found that wake-up call and they turned back to faith and they turned back to their creator whereas there are so many people that were quote-unquote religious but then once they're put in that circumstance it doesn't hold up because the learned is not like the absorbed and the preached about is not like the experienced it has to go back to your own fundamental experiences and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for example he said وَمَنْ لَا يَشْكُرْ بِالْقَلِيلِ لَمْ يَشْكُرْ بِالْكَثِيرِ that whoever does not thank Allah for the little things in life is not going to be grateful for the big things in life whoever is not patient with the small things that are going to happen to them how are they going to truly find patience with the major things that happen to them in life if you can't have patience with someone cutting you off on the side of the road and hold yourself if you can't have patience in an argument how are you going to have patience when you're facing a disaster in life the experienced is not like the learned the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said إِنَّمَا الْعِلْمُ بِالتَّعَلُّمْ وَإِنَّمَا الْحِلْمُ بِالتَّحَلُّمْ that knowledge is through seeking knowledge and patience and forbearance is through practicing patience and forbearance you have to constantly make sure that those qualities are, are, are well established in your heart well established in your character so that when those things come when those tests come you know how to deal with them your faith actually holds up and the Prophet ﷺ taught us many du'as in this regard that it's not just knowledge but it's actually being uh, be, you know making sure that you stick to that knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you thabat and firmness so he taught us to say Allah mahdini wa saddidni oh Allah guide me and keep me firm and Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah when he used to read the verse in Surah Hud the hardest verse ever revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتْ وَمَنْ تَابَ مَعَكْ وَلَا تَطْغَوْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says so be firm as you've been commanded and those that have turned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with you and do not turn back on your heels do not turn away from faith but the learned is not like the experience so Imam Hassan al-Basri every time he would read that verse he would say Allahumma anta rabbuna farzuqna al-istiqama Allahumma anta rabbuna farzuqna al-istiqama oh Allah you are our Lord so grant us that firmness the most frequent dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the most frequent supplication Ya muqallib al-qulub thabbit qalbi ala deenik O turner of hearts keep my heart firm on your path your heart is already inconsistent but then something happens and you have to make sure that it stays consistent enough on faith and that it doesn't go wild and all over the place when the Prophet ﷺ passed away and you talk about a test to the community of the Messenger ﷺ, he was their everything they saw him every day they prayed behind him every day they experienced his beautiful character every single day and then the Prophet ﷺ passes away and when some of the, the, the Sahaba heard it what was the natural emotion that overtook them denial it can't be true absolute denial 
Because that was the most convenient emotion to, to maintaining the faith. That was how they felt guarded. That's how they felt protected. It was a safety net. So when the Messenger وسلم, passed away and Umar bin Khattab عنه, starts to stand up and threaten the people who say that the Prophet وسلم, passed away and Abu Bakr عنه, is the one who stands up and who loved the Prophet وسلم, more? Abu Bakr or Umar? Abu Bakr loved the Prophet وسلم, more. But Abu Bakr stands up and he tells Umar to sit down and he says مَنْ كَانَ يَعْبُدُ مُحَمَّدًا فَإِنَّ مُحَمَّدًا قَدْ مَاتْ Whoever used to worship Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam know that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has passed away. وَمَنْ كَانَ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ And whoever used to worship Allah, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ حَيٌّ لَا يَمُوتُ Know that Allah is ever living and He does not die. And he read the verse, وَمَا مُحَمَدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلِ Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was but a messenger. Other messengers have passed before him. If he dies or if he is killed, will you turn back on your heels? Umar anhu felt his legs escape him from under him when he heard that verse. And what did he say? Umar, who used to stand up and pray at night. Umar, who loved the Quran. What did Umar say? He said, it was as if the, it was the first time I heard that verse. That verse had new meaning to me because I experienced it. Before, when we used to read that verse, that was a far possibility. We didn't think about it. But when Abu Bakr who stood up and recited it in that moment, suddenly it meant, more, it meant something more to me. Suddenly it hit me, it struck me that even Allah mentions the possibility in the Quran or mentions that the Prophet وسلم, that you will die and they too will perish. You perish and they perish, Ya Rasulullah It hit him there. And his reaction, if you were observing that, his reaction, you might think that maybe he loves the Prophet وسلم, more than Abu Bakr عنه, but that's just not true. No one else in there loves the Prophet ﷺ after Abu Bakr, maybe more than Umar. But Abu Bakr who solidified those concepts in his life. No one loved. The Prophet ﷺ, when, when Abu Bakr who thought that he would be in harm's way, he would put his life on the line all the time for the Prophet ﷺ. So clearly the life of the Messenger was even more important to him than his own life. But he already processed in his mind and internally processed what it will be like when the Prophet ﷺ passes away. He paid attention to the ayat more so than any other human being. He internalized them more so than any other human being. What does this mean for us, dear brothers and sisters? أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَن يُتْرَكُوا أَن يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ do people think they just say, we believe, and then they're not going to be tested in regards to their faith, in regards to their health, in regards to their wealth, in regards to their families, in regards to everything else. You will be tested. But here's the deal. As believers, we do not put ourselves in positions where our faith is going to be made vulnerable. 